it is. <laughs> I yeah, I am there. So, okay, all right. Good, good. We can start. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so good morning. I can see that we have 28 participants yeah. for our uh, memory training class. And uh, the one disadvantage is that I can't see you all. I can see only Jana Radzevich. Hello, Jana. I can see Tarayer, Tarayer. <laughs> Hello. And then I, I have seen uh, Gabor. Good morning, Dana, and Good. everybody. <laughs> Good morning. And I, I expect Dario from Italy. Dario, are you with us? I can't hear him, but uh, I have seen him on uh, on the num on the list of names. So anyway, uh, because I know some of you in person, I and I can see some of you on the screen. I uh, just uh, expect that all of you are over 25. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why I am mentioning this age? Uh, just because uh, the brain, the evolution of the human brain is accomplished approximately at the age of 25. <laughs> And when we reach this age, we are on the peak. But as we get older than 25, we can expect some mental deterioration. And we have actually the full right to experience it because our brain is becoming somehow less and less functional. But I expect that your interest today was to learn if there is something wrong uh, with your action, if you are running throughout the apartment and searching for uh, keys, mobile phones, glasses all the time, or if there is something wrong with you, if you are going for something to the refrigerator, you open the door, Michelle, you stare into the fridge, and you, at that moment, you simply don't know what you wanted. You have to go back to the starting point and say, oh, I wanted butter. And then you, you know, you know what you wanted from the fridge. And even worse, what can happen that you are sitting in the car and you start to contemplate, have I locked the door? Have I turned off the gas on the cooker? Have I unplugged the iron? And these things are quite serious. And it actually bothers you so much to take bus in the opposite direction and go back home. You just go back home to check upon your own action which you don't remember. So everything, what I have just described, you know, all these, uh, these um, situations that uh, I expect that they happen to you because they usually happen to uh, people who are even younger than we are. So I wanted to calm you down. These are not the real memory problems. Stop to worry. Because in all these cases that I described, <coughs> you can actually 
talk about the lack of self-discipline. Are you thinking about butter, Michelle, when you are going to the fridge to collect butter? Probably not. And I expect what you are thinking about. You are probably thinking about from yesterday. What is still in your mind? You know, maybe you met someone and the conversation didn't go in that direction that you wanted it to go and you are still thinking about it that you should reply something else or you had some argument. So it is still in your mind. Or maybe you are already thinking about what you will be doing in the afternoon. Whom you are supposed to meet, what you are supposed to shop, and what will you cook and just the plans for the future. So you see, we actually are not forced to think about butter when we are going to the refrigerator to pick it up because it is such a simple thing, so ordinary, that we just let our mind run in different directions. But we are immediately punished for that, because when we open the door, we simply don't know what we wanted to take out of the fridge. What happens when we are, what is actually going on at that situation when we are running through our apartment searching for glasses, uh, searching for mobile phones, for keys and for other things that usually we can't find. So if you are not wearing glasses all the time as I do now, but in the past, I also had a period of time when I was using glasses only for reading. And when I didn't need them, I just took them and threw them, put them somewhere where I was just standing without thinking about it, just automatically, unconsciously. And then I put newspapers on my glasses and then a sweater and then I had a chance that I will find my glasses again much later. And it is what happens to us oh, when, when we are not thinking about what we are doing, when we are not aware of the action. We are immediately punished that we simply don't remember what we have done, where we put our mobile phone, where we put our, our glasses, uh, the keys, and we are desperately searching through the apartment and we think that our memory is no more uh, use, you know, more, you know, in the, in the shape that it used to be and we are getting unhappy. We start to observe our action and it is getting worse because we realize that we are forgetting more and will be putting somewhere your mobile phone you have to wake up and say, oh, I am not supposed to leave my mobile phone on any place and any spot where I am just standing. I have to bring it back to certain spot where it is supposed to be. Do you realize the difference? It is a conscious action. You are thinking of what you are doing. And you will be highly rewarded for the thinking because the mobile phone or the keys or the glasses will always wait for you on that place where you put them, where you store them. So 
it is that conscious action that is needed because our brain otherwise does not register what you are doing if you are thinking about something else. And what to do in the situation that uh, you really don't uh, remember if you have locked the door or if you unplug the iron or turn off the stove. These are quite serious situations. And uh, they could cause some, really, some disaster. So in this case, I even recommend to pay more attention to our own actions. And uh, what is highly recommended uh, is that you repeat out loud what you are doing. Just in the case that you are locking the door and you are not sure that you will remember it 20 minutes later, I highly recommend to repeat three times out loud. I am just locking the door. I am just locking the door. I am just locking the door. There is a danger that the neighbor from the opposite apartment will open the door and uh, check up on you what you are doing, why you are talking out loud. You just explain that you are practicing memory training. And what happens? In order to be able to pronounce that sentence three times, you have to set up your facial muscles yeah, to pronounce it. And at the same time, you activate the language center in your brain. And there is no more room for any other thoughts. So 20 minutes later, you will for sure recall that you have been repeating that sentence three times. And in addition to it, you will even hear your own voice how you are, you know, pronouncing that sentence three times as an echo. And you can be absolutely positive that you have done it. Sometimes I am getting a question from people asking how why I will recognize that I have not done it yesterday, that it was done today. So I suggest do it every day and do it consciously. It means you will avoid to think about anything else that is more interesting or more urgent for you at that moment when you are locking the door. Do you understand? The conscious action secures that we will remember what we have done. So it was a small introduction to calm you down that there is nothing wrong with your memory if you are searching for something all the time or if you don't remember what you wanted to collect from the refrigerator. And now before we start some exercise, I need you to get some understanding how our brain is working. And the most important information for you right now that you have to keep in your mind is that the human brain during the process of evolution has been developed in such a way that it is actually responsible for our survival if we happen to be in the peril of our life. And it is the main mission of our brain. And because our brain knows it, and it also knows that if it is overloaded, this information, it wouldn't be able to fulfill its mission. So it means that the result would be that we wouldn't survive. 
because the brain wouldn't be able to find the important information which helps us to survive. So you can't be surprised that we don't remember everything what we need because our brain is somehow reluctant to accept, to absorb too much of information. So it is very important for you to realize this and also to realize that brain is not such an efficient device for thinking, remembering, as you expect it. Brain has many limitations and without our assistance, it is not able to process certain information. So, first of all, we have to realize that we are equipped with a very limited capacity of our short-term memory. What does it mean? If I give you a list of 10 words or numbers, how many do you think that you would be able to remember from that list, Michelle? How many? How many words from the list of 10? I didn't hear. Please repeat. So I am giving you a list of 10 words. Yes. What do you think that you, how, how many words would you remember if I ask you immediately to tell me the words that I gave you on the list? How many would you be able to recall? What is your guess? Seven plus minus two. <laughs> yeah, it is between, yeah. It is approximately seven, the average. It is between five and nine. And it depends upon your current, you know, present state of your mind. If you feel tired or thirsty or suffer from a headache, you wouldn't be able probably to remember more than five words from my list, maybe even not that. But if you are, you know, full of, uh, full of like what I say, bright eyed, bushy tails, full of beans, so you would be probably even remember nine words from my list. So first of all, I would like you to realize how we are obtaining information from the outside world. Jana, because I can see only Michelle and Jana, so <laughs> I am going back to you. Jana, tell me, uh, tell me with the help of, of what we are getting information from the outside world. Show me. You mean I, I have to talk? Yes, you have to talk. Yes, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jana. You see, I am now listening about 10 words, but it yes. depends, for example, it depends. No, no, no. I am not asking about 10 words. Michel answered that. I am asking you, how are we getting information from the outside world? With the help of what? How can you absorb the information that is coming to you? With the help of what? I will help you. <laughs> have a look. Mm -hmm. With your, with your vision. Ah, vision. Yes, with yes. vision. What yes. else? Jana, what else? I have to think if I understand the words. You, some information are coming through your hearing. Yes, yes hearing. Yeah, and some other through your... Nose. Through my, my, my... Smell? Ah, smell. my nose. Smell. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> correct. And some information. Uh, uh, Dana, one minute. Uh, do, perhaps you might have some people who want to come in and I cannot give them the entrance because you are the host. I'm not sure if she's okay. 
it's just i see uh, so so you can turn me off for a while and uh, and help them or monique do it no, no, it's not so easy okay it doesn't matter the uh, the people who are late or oh, it's their fault okay yeah so so help okay. them i we will finish with vayana and then you can turn me off and just let me talk and you know then i will come back on the picture yeah uh, i let you talk but you can yeah. tell the people to put their video on if they want because otherwise it's not very nice. Yeah, I can't see them. I can see only two, Michelle and Yana. So they are. Yeah, I don't understand are, why, why uh, so many people. Are, are, yeah, I, I can turn out my camera. No, yes. oh, no yes. on, the, on yes. the opposite. You should leave it and other people yeah. should put their camera on. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not very nice for Dana to see a black screen. Okay? Yana, Yana, yes. we, we are I going G, on. I... Yeah, but I can't see you, Gabor. I, I can see only Yana and Michelle. Uh, I, I am here. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. My, my I would like to, to see you. So Yana, uh, what else? Yes. So it was vision, hearing, smell. Smell. What else? And, uh, voice. No, no. no. Taste. 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 Taste, yes. But Taste I, and, I have and to hear. No. No, no. here you we said that. And touch. Uh -huh. Touch. Ah, yes. with touching. Touch. With touching. Yes. These but how to touch? But, but yeah, how yeah, to through touch? touch, through touch, you are also getting information. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? So these, yes. what are the basic senses? So Monique, you can you can go to uh, to let in other people and just you know if you need to turn off my picture and let my sound only, it is enough. Uh, oh, I don't know. It no, is I cannot go. I cannot so easily go back. It doesn't matter. Uh, I think there are two people, uh, Francoise and, and uh, Aziel, who want to come in, but uh, I don't know. Okay. So I matter. can stop for a while, and you can let them in, and then we will go on. Yeah, we now know what is Wait the way minute. how uh, we are getting information. I yeah, everyone will remember it. No, I, don't, I, I, don't I, I really I don't know how to how to make it to stop it to give it. It, it's not worse. Okay, it's a bit more right. complicated. Doesn't matter. All right, I will. Hello, Dana. I don't understand why you can see only two people because I can see uh, 14, 15, 16 people, including. I don't you. know. I just don't know. Oh, it yeah. happened. Be, because I am probably because I am on the picture. Yeah. Now I have only sixteen now. Yeah, I can I, see sixteen. Yeah, but do you know why it is probably because I am on the picture? You know, all my. Uh, oh wait. You are also such a small like we sixteen the others. I see, and on my on my screen I am the big one, and Not. then I can see Monique. Michelle and Jana Radzevich. Ne. Yes, 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 yeah, but yeah. I have now 16. Yeah, I oh, see yeah, now so, 16. <laughs> so they yeah, are the technical right. problems, but the most important is that those, all the other people can hear me. Yes. So, Anna, so what, I, I, am, I will repeat what I wanted to get from uh, Jana. Uh, what I asked her was how we are actually getting the information from the outside world. And the answer was through vision, through yes. hearing, yes. smell, taste, touch. And touch. You know, so, yeah, the basic senses. And you can hear the senses as are connected to so-called sensory memory. So it is where the information from the outside world and even from our inside body are going. This sensory memory has a huge capacity. Uh, you, you wouldn't believe how many, how many, no, it is how much or many uh, bits of information are coming every second into this sensory memory. I can't see Gabor, but I will ask him. Gabor, tell me, what is your guess? How much or how many bits of information? Oh, yeah. oh. someone is, someone has to un, uh, mute himself or herself. Mm -hmm. So, Gabor, what yes. do you think? Every second, how 
many bits of information is coming into this sensory memory through our uh, with the help of our senses eyes okay. and smell and that's what yes yeah how uh, how to beat oh la la 10000 yeah you are very modest michel <laughs> michel what do you think how many bits of information every second oh. to the sensory memory ah you go go <laughs> ага старт видео дорогие друзья Michelle what was your guess I can't hear you so yeah Teresia or there is Alisa Alisa what do you think that every second we are getting into that sensory memory how many bits of information about two Two bits of information every second. Yeah, you are even more modest. So Gabor said 10,000 and I said that it was much more. Much so, more? Much more, much more than 10,000. I, 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 I will, yeah, I will not torture you. I will not torture you, but okay. I, will, I will reveal that the scientists counted that it is something like 10 million. Wow. 10 million bits of information every second. Can you imagine every second in that sensory memory? But you agree with me that even such an efficient device for thinking as our brain is would probably overflow if everything stays there. But fortunately, it doesn't. It is falling out within a few seconds. And only a tiny fragment on this huge amount is moving to that short-term memory that we have already talked about. It was what I asked Michelle and uh, the others, how, what is the, the capacity of that short-term memory? And we agreed that it is in average seven bits of information within one input. So you see that it is so limited. And now you know that the information is moving from that sensory memory to the short-term memory, which has a limited capacity. So you can probably expect the behavior of this short-term memory because it knows that there is no room quickly because it understands that it must be vacant for the other new information, ongoing information from the sensory memory. And because there is such, you know, a limited room, such a limited space in that short-term memory, it means it is a very fast procedure. And this is actually what is very dangerous for us. Because if there is no time, almost no time to process it, it must be so quick. We can very easily lose the oncoming information within this short term memory. It's so easy. So you understand that this short-term memory is very, very vulnerable. On the other hand, it is the most important stage of our memory because it is the only stage where we can actually intervene, where the inter intervention of memory trainer can go, that we can affect, we can manipulate with the information. You might have heard the term working memory. And working memory refers to the same, to the short term memory. But if we are talking, we keep in our mind more the capacity, you know, how, how many bits of information we can fit into it. When we are talking about the working memory, then we are already talking how we are manipulating the information in order to process it successfully. And I have to tell you that we are able 
to improve that working memory or that working relationship between that short-term memory and long-term memory, which is where the successfully processed information is moving and where it is stored for the future usage. So we are able to improve it dramatically. And not only that, we are also able to secure that we will be able to reveal the information that is stored in that long-term memory in the pace that we need it in the future easily. And it is actually what memory training is about. We are focusing on this short-term memory, which is so essential for us. And we are trying somehow to affect the information that is coming and to manipulate with that in that way that we would be able to process it successfully. But before I will give you the example, I would like to, uh, to mention one more aspect, which is quite important. It is the neuroplasticity. And you probably agree with me if you compare a five-year-old grandchild of yours and someone who is in his 80s, that there is a certain difference in the approach of new information. And you probably agree with me that that or oh, oh, five years old child is very eager, very keen to learn something new. Why it is so? Alisa. Because, because he wants to acquire more knowledge about the world around him. And he is, uh, he is looking for any way to fish for new information. Correct. That's the main thing, yeah. yeah. Correct. He Correct. is not so full of it as yet. Correct. Because that five-year-old child doesn't know too much. So it means that everything new is very attractive for him. Yeah. So he is, his brain can be compared with a sponge. It is absorbing the new information very eagerly. But what, what about that 80 year old colleague of yours? <laughs> so is he also so eager to absorb something new? Yes, yes. Um, no, probably no. Less. less. Yeah, yeah, less, much less. Less. Why? Michelle, why? I will tell you, I will not torture you. Do you know why? Because that 80 year old colleague of yours, he thinks that he knows already everything. <laughs> these, yeah. elderly, these elderly elderly brains are becoming somehow somehow you know uh, I don't know if I pronounce that word in English correctly, apathetic. You know, they are, they are just, you know, they don't want to learn more because oh, they have heard so much, you know, during their lives and they, nothing can actually, you know, overwhelm them. Uh, no. overwhelm, yeah. Can I, can I add something? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They cannot learn so much because their database is full. Their records yeah. are filled already. There is no place, no space, you know, to receive new information. It's very difficult to remember anything. You know? Michelle, Michelle. Despite our wish that maybe we would like to, to receive, but that there is no capacity you know, left. I have to laugh. Michelle, it is the common mistake. People are absolutely convinced that it is full, that they know everything and they, there is no space and there is even no willingness. You know, just I am 
full of information. My brain is full of information. I just don't want to learn anything new. But, but I will tell you something. Because nowadays we have the possibilities to monitor what is going on in the brain. And uh, so we can see that uh, if we are giving an new uh, information to that elderly brain, it, it does not on the monitors, you know, the monitoring techniques, we can see that not too much happens because the brain is not interested in it. But there is one exception, one exception that works under any condition. And even that elderly brain forgets that it knows everything, <laughs> that there is no space and that it doesn't want to learn anything new. It is the case when you serve something attractive. And attractive information is the key. It is the secret. Because even that elderly brain forgets immediately that it knows everything, that it doesn't want anything, and goes after it and starts to cooperate. And it is actually the foundation for memory training. We are trying to alter any ordinary information. Doesn't matter if it is important or not, but it sounds ordinary. You know, it, it is, you know, just um, something that it wouldn't trigger our interest. And we, we are able to transfer it, alter it in something attractive. At that moment, the brain absorbs it and we will remember it. And now I will give you the concrete example that is so good and that I am using always when I am talking about this introductory, you know, introductory matters of memory training. So I had in the beginning, it means, you know, many, many years ago when I started in early 90s, uh, in one of uh, first of my classes, I had a very well-educated lady who came to me and she complained that she is probably getting Alzheimer's disease. She said, I am so really, I am so annoyed with myself. Imagine that I am going every weekend to my summer cottage and the neighbor has a dog. The dog is very friendly. It always comes towards the fence and I always go towards the fence as well and I try to pet the dog and every time I realize that I do not remember the name of that dog. And it happens over and over to me. So just tell me, it must be probably Alzheimer's disease. And I, I ask her, and what is the name of that dog that it is so difficult for you to remember? And she said, you know, it is such a strange name. His name is Antis. And I really am not able to remember it. And I, and I said, oh, I, I think that you should help yourself with some mnemonic, you know, some memory aid. What about to say that it is an anti-Soviet dog, anti-Soviet anti dog? And she looked at me and she said, what a nonsense. I have never heard about any anti-Soviet dog. And I said, and it is, the tr it is the secret. It must be something so unusual, so attractive, such a, you know, such a stupid example that you would actually never forget it because it is so unusual. So the unusual and attractive information are interesting for our brain and they, our brain does register and absorb and process successfully such type of information. 
So what memory training is about? Memory training is about actually trying to transfer, alter the normal information that are so difficult for us to remember because they are not interesting enough. They are ordinary. So we try to alter them in something attractive in order to make our brain interested. And it works like that. And I will, I think that today we have a time for a game. It is a little bit, you know, difficult that I can't see all of you, but you will be able, all of you, to play the game with me. Do you know what I need from you now? To put in front of you a sheet of paper and a pencil. Because I will ask you to do certain things, yeah? So, everyone got it. Mm -hmm. Perfect, Michelle. <laughs> good. <laughs> good that I see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Ali, uh, now I see Alice and, and Michelle, nobody, and Monique, but Monique is not alive. Monique is only a picture. So, all right. So I, I am pleased to have at least two cooperators with whom I can cooperate. So now... Uh, Dana, I will, yeah? Dana, can I make a suggestion? If you go on the top right of your... So right. Yeah, Thank now I, yeah, yeah. Now, now I have uh, five people. Now I have Olga uh, from Macedonia. Mm -hmm. Peter, to display speaker, uh, speaker, you see only, I see only you and a few people. But if yeah, I, do, I, I can see Peter. Gallery, display yeah. gallery, then I can see everything. I can see. Yeah, all right. So any, yeah, yeah, I can see now Rita and Dario and Aneta from Bratislava and Peter from Denmark and Olga from Skopje. So, all right. So and I believe that other people are there. So, but uh, despite the fact that I can't be in direct touch with everyone, I will ask you to take a paper and a sheet of paper and a pencil. And now we will start to play the game. Uh -huh. So I just want to explain to you how effective uh, tool memory training is and how quickly we can help to people who are suffering from, um, from uh, the feeling you know, of um, underestimation that they are underestimating their skills. They don't trust to their, uh, to their brain, to their um, art of memory. And how can we help them quickly on this one example that comes from my own experience? So that's why we will play the game together, just to give you uh, that, uh, you know, that quick and simple understanding of what memory training means and how effective it is. So <coughs> now all of you please imagine that you are with me uh, in the plane, aircraft, flying from Frankfurt to Boston. Yeah. So everyone is with me. And you are on that aircraft. And it is a long flight, at least eight hours. So what comes into your mind, at least what came into my mind, to do some exercise in order to prevent, you know, the deep thrombosis. So I decided to do some exercise during that flight. Uh, I normally, if I see you alive, I would ask you where you would go. And people usually suggest in the aisle or they suggest to the toilet. But these places are not suitable enough because, you know, in the aisle, people are passing along. And in the toilet, someone will knock uh, 
you know, on the door uh, quickly. So the best is to go in that in that uh, space uh, close to the toilet where is a little bit of space like to wait, you know, like a, a little waiting space. And it is where I went, where I went to, to do some exercises. But the place was already taken, occupied. There was already something doing exercise. And yeah, so now someone must mute himself. I can hear you and it, we shouldn't hear that. And I, we started to talk. It was quite natural. And I learned that the person was a sculptor. Sculptor who lived in Köln on mine in Germany and was going to Boston to see his father and celebrate his birthday with him. And I don't know what is your reaction if someone says, I am a sculptor, I am a writer, I am a singer, I am a composer, uh, I am an actor, you know, poet, you know, such, uh, such uh, vocations. Because I know some of these people, I always ask the first question. Can you make enough living with this sort of job? And this American sculptor answered, no, I can't. It is more or less like my hobby nowadays. And I am earning my living with translations from Japanese into English and vice versa. And and I ask, I, I, and I ask him, oh, it is interesting that you, you have such a good command of Japanese. And he said, oh, it's easy for me because I have lived for many years in Japan and I have a Japanese wife. And my next question was, are you teaching Japanese classes? And... His answer was, no, yeah. I can't do it. And I asked him, why can't you do it? And he said, because I don't remember anything. Oh, 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 it was something for a memory trainer. Uh, why can't you remember anything? What does it mean? <laughs> oh, someone has to mute himself. Mm -hmm. Monique, can you see who needs or mute them? Because we are getting that sound all the time. So hopefully Monique will be able to do it. So I'm going back. And his answer was, my dear lady, you don't know anything about me. But I can tell you that I suffered twice from meningitis. Yeah. Monique, do something about that sound, please. I, I, I think that someone is on the phone. Yeah. So, Jill. Yeah, Monique, you have to mute someone who is on the phone and doesn't understand that he has to do it himself. Still. All right, so I'm going on. Meningitis is a serious disease that really does affect the quality of memory. And this man, as you heard, suffered twice from meningitis. So he was absolutely convinced that his memory was affected by the disease and he acted according to that. And I asked him, please, uh, would you be willing to describe 
you know, what it means that you can't remember anything. And he said, oh, easily. I am telling to my colleague, you have a beautiful skirt. And do you think that she's pleased? No, she's annoyed. And her answer is, please stop it. I don't want to hear it again. You have been repeating the same this week already five times. And he looked at me with despair and he said, I don't remember that I would have told her about that skirt at all. So you see how bad it is with my memory. And I said, oh, oh, uh, do you know what I think that, uh, that is going on with you? I think that uh, nobody tried to convince you that you can remember better than you think. And he apparently was a victim of a stereotype. Because people who, who went through meningitis, they just believe that they, uh, their memory is uh, badly affected. And I told him, uh, come to my class, which I'm giving next week in New Hampshire. And he said, no, I can't. I am going back on Sunday back to Frankfurt. But can't you do something for me right now? Do you still, re still remember where we were standing? correct, in front of the toilet. So I said, all right. So could you please think about where you have seen your last rainbow? And now you are there with me on that aircraft. And I am asking you the same question. Where have you seen, where and when have you seen your last rainbow? Please. Just think about it. Olga, where have you seen your last rainbow? Unmute yourself, please. What does it mean, uh, rainbow? Rainbow, rainbow. Rainbow. Is, uh, rainbow. After, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rainbow after the rain. Yeah. You don't remember. The sky. Yeah, on the sky. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't know. Maybe uh, two weeks, uh, two weeks ago. Good. Good. So it actually doesn't matter when you have seen your last rainbow. I want all of you to write down on the paper what are the colors, the color spectrum of the rainbow. There are seven colors. Please write down on that paper, on that sheet of paper that you have, try to write down how the colors in the rainbow are going on. Yeah, try to try it. There are seven colors. Red, black, black, white, yellow, purple, and. Uh, so I don't know who answered right now, but it was not correct. But it was the same with my American sculptor. He could get only five colors in an in wrong order, wrong order. And he looked at me with anger. And he said, didn't I tell you that I can't remember anything? Why you try to torture me here? And I just looked at him with a smile and I said, you know, it is so easy to remember something like that because you use mnemonic. You develop a sentence, so-called acrostic, where every word starts with the same initial letter as the information that you need to remember. So I gave him the sentence in English, which I will give to you and you will write it down. Yeah. Richard of York gave battle in vain. Richard. 
Beide. Of York. York is with Y in the beginning. Gave battle in vain. And now we are going back to this and we will, we will um, uh, derive the colors. So Richard is what? What color starts with R in English? Red. Red. Uh, oh, Richard off. O. Oh. Which orange. color starts with O? Oh. Orange. 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 So it is red, orange. Yellow. G gay. Uh, Richard of York. York. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yellow. Oh. Yeah. Gabor. Thank you. Yellow. Gave. Green. 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 Gave. Green. Battle. B. B is what? Blue. 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 In. In. What is in? Oh. It is that dark blue is called indigo. Indigo. Ah. Yes. Indigo. Oh. And vein, vein is V. Violet. 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 Perfect. So now we know the order of the colors in the rainbow. So we will repeat it. It is red, red. orange, orange. Yellow. Yellow. yellow, yellow, green, green. green. Blue. Blue. blue, indigo, blue. indigo, violet. and violet. And indigo yeah. and violet. Perfect. Now we are going back to the plane, yeah, to the aircraft. So, <laughs> and now I looked at him and I said, and what about the planets? I have to tell you that the flight happened in 2004. So at that time, it was still two years prior uh, that um, International Congress of Astronomists in Prague, where they excluded the little last planet because they said that it was an asteroid, not uh, not a planet. So, but in 2004, we still had all nine planets there. So, take your sheet of paper and write down what I wanted from him. Write down uh, the planets coming from the sun, the closest to the sun, and going all nine planets in correct order. Try to do it, please. So, I don't know what is your result, but I can tell you that he couldn't make it. He simply got only seven planets. He was annoyed with me. He didn't like me. And he complained that I knew it in advance that he couldn't remember. So, and again, like in the first case, I gave him the acrostic. And you can write it down again, and then we will repeat the planets. So the acrostic for the nine planets is 
my very educated mother just gave us nine uh, just excuse me just served us nine pumpkins so my very educated mother just served us nine pumpkins have you got it yes so now we can repeat the planets so what is my my is um, ma 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 now um, there is no 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 there is my and there is why at the end it refers to mercury, mercury yeah. it is help you to it is helping you to identify mercury yes my very very what is very venus venus, venus. venus. educated earth uh, earth correct mother Mars. 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 Now it is Mars. Now it is Mars. <laughs> just, just Jupiter. 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 Served. Saturn. 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 Yes. Uh, us. 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 Uranus. 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 Mm -hmm. Nine. Nine. Uh, nine. Neptune. Uh, Neptune. 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 And pumpkins. Pluto. 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 Exactly. Pluto. This sentence also also refers to the number of planets. So you see that it is pretty simple. <clears throat> and now please lean back in your chairs. Now I want your absolutely undivided attention because now the most revealing fact comes. All of you are with me. Nobody is sleeping. No. So, good. <laughs> I looked at him and I told him, you know, even if you somehow master to remember seven colors of the rainbow in a correct order or nine planets in the correct order, it doesn't mean too much because every child, every school child can remember something like that if, if he or she has to. You will not definitely overwhelm yourself or anyone else with this knowledge. If I really want to convince you that you can remember correctly, I must give you something that something that all the others would think that it is not possible to remember it. That it is actually impossible. Something big. So what about the list of American presidents? It is just <laughs> very, very actual for now. Yeah. It was year 2004. Uh, I had a list of 43 American presidents at that time. <laughs> but my American scalper started to faint. He said, no, no, no. Nobody knows that in America. We have not been taught something like that in the school. So, and I looked at him with a smile. I said, you say nobody, but I know the list. And as we were standing in front of the toilet on the aircraft, I just gave him the list. He wrote them down. I had them in my mind. Then I looked at him and I said, do you know, I'm already tired. I am going back to my seat and I will take a nap. Before we land in Boston, 
which will be in one and a half of hour, you will wake me up and perform. But I want to tell you that no acrostic would help you to remember the list of American presidents if you don't know that the president of such a name did exist. So it means that you have to go through the list at least 10 times just to get the orientation where the names are located on which, you know, in which part of the list, just to get that orientation that they do exist and they are there. And then you will develop the acrostic, maybe four sentences of 10, 11 names. And you will remember, you know, the order of the sentences. And then before we land in Boston, you will just wake me up and perform for me. And I didn't pay more attention to him. I returned to my seat and fell asleep. Before we landed in Boston, uh, I was uh, waking up anyway because they served some refreshment. And only then I realized that he was sitting behind me on the next, on the next row. And he knocked on my shoulder. I turned to, towards him and I could see his big, bright eyes. And he was telling me, I got them, all of them, without any mistake. And I had a strong expression on my face because I didn't expect anything else. And I told him, pass to me the original list that I dictated to you, uh, and then you can start. And I was holding his list, and he started. He didn't make any mistake. And do you know what was his reaction? It was the best flight of my life. You have convinced me that my memory is still functional. And years before he met me, he was convinced that he couldn't remember because he suffered twice from meningitis. And many people are convinced that they can't remember properly only because they are aging. And it is true, our aging brain needs our assistance because our aging brain is not able to solve certain tasks without this assistance. So I don't know if you realized it, but what, have, what I have just taught you, the acrostic was actually helping you to remember information in certain order, in sequence. Yeah, do you agree with me? And you probably have not known that the human brain does not have the ability to remember information in sequence. Doesn't matter if you are 20 or 80, your brain can't do it. And doesn't matter if your IQ is 100 or 170. Our brain doesn't know how to remember information in sequence. So many of the techniques are actually focused on providing assistance to our brain how to remember information in sequence. And this was only one simple technique that I have just taught you, the acrostic. And you can use it for any list that you need to remember. But right now, I will teach you one more technique. And because we still have a little bit of time, we will try it. And this is considered like to be a foundation for memory training. The technique is called LOTSI. LOTSI means plural from locus, 
and Klokus means a place. So it means that uh, this technique, which uh, on memory training, has a long, long uh, history. It was. Yeah. It is believed that uh, the father of okay. mnemonics was okay, the, uh, the, uh, the poet, uh, famous poet of antiquity, Simonides of Keo, who lived approximately 500 years uh, BC, uh, around 500 years BC. So you see that the mnemonics are. Um, you know, old something like 2,000, 3,000 years. And this, what I will teach you now, is the absolutely basic mnemonic uh, Lotsi method, Lotsi technique. You, may, you might call it the palace, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, memory, uh, palace memory or something like that. So it is based on the knowledge of space of certain space and uh, <clears throat> maybe it would be useful if I very quickly introduce uh, uh, that myth that is uh, believed that uh, the technique originated uh, from and <clears throat> it happened uh, in, um, in um, uh, antiquity when Simonides was asked to, <clears throat> to compose a poem an order, order, uh, which is that, you know, honorable poem uh, for a man who celebrated his, uh, his birthday and he, he was organizing a banquet. And uh, Simonides uh, <coughs> was actually hesitant to, uh, to compose uh, or to devote the poem only to him uh, because <coughs> You know, that was a danger <clears throat> that he could somehow uh, irritate the gods living nearby on the, on the mountain Olympus. So to be on the safe side, uh, Simonides devoted half of the poem to two young gods, Castor and Pollux. And on behalf of the poem was... Uh, uh, devoted to, uh, to the host who had who celebrated his birthday, uh, but when he finished the poem, the, the reciting of his poem, looking at all the audience, uh, the host was very unhappy, and he said, "You know, Simonides, uh, we agreed upon some uh, fee." for you, but I won't pay you that fee because you actually devoted only half of the poem to me. Uh, so I suggest, I highly recommend that you would ask the two young gods, Polus and Castor, to pay you the second half of the fee. Oh, what an unpleasant situation. Simonides was not too pleased. But fortunately, at that moment, a servant arrived and he said, two young boys are waiting for you outside, but it, it is very urgent, so please hurry up. So he apologized and went out. At the same moment, a huge, huge, um, you know, noise uh, was, was happening behind him because Greece is uh, is um, situated on this very uh, very um, uh, very uh, that area of uh, frequent earthquakes and uh, very uh, unstable uh, ground. It's melodic. And, uh, yeah, and uh, and one earthquake was just <laughs> taking place at that moment. And uh, the building where the celebration was, uh, the banquet was happening, just collapsed and killed completely all the audience, including the host and everyone who was listening to the poem. And not only uh, killed them, but completely displaced them. So their relatives were not able to identify the victims of this disaster. And someone got, uh, yeah, when, when actually he came out, there was nobody, you know, he couldn't see any two young boys, but only it was happening behind him, but he was safe because he was outside. So it means that um, after 
when uh, the unhappy relatives couldn't identify the victims, they asked him, Simone, that you have been the last person who looked into their faces. Uh, could you help us to identify uh, these victims uh, and the casualties? And um, Simone, Des, to his own surprise, was able to place them on their seat, how they were seated and actually identify them according, you know, uh, the remains, what was their shoes and dresses and whatever. And according to this experience, he actually invented this Lotzi technique. Uh, now I will ask you, uh, who were those two young boys who wanted to talk to him? Who is able to answer? Who were the two young boys outside? Yes, Torrent products. Castor and Pollux, yeah, yeah. And they were coming to pay half of the fee, yes? Yes. With saving his life. Do you understand? Well, so it is the legend, of course. So, but the Lossi is with, Lossi technique is still with us. So what is the, I, I told you that, and I just explained to you that it very much depends upon the good knowledge of the space. So what space actually we are having always with us, wherever we move, tell me, what space which you are very familiar with is always with you? Tell, uh, Alisa? Olympus, uh, Mount... No, no, Gym what is with you personally? Uh, there, happening. What is with you personally, all the time, wherever you move, what is going with you? What is going with me? Personal belongings or personal effects? What? Also, but mainly your body, your body, your body, exactly. Body, yeah, yeah. Your body is moving with you wherever you go. And it is a good example, actually, of a space which we are very familiar with. Yeah. So because we know our body well. So normally I would ask you to, to get up, but because then you wouldn't be maybe able to follow me. So I will leave you on your seats and <clears throat> I will ask you before we start, could you recall the last Summer Olympic Games? Where it happened? When it happened? Rio de Janeiro. Perfect, perfect. And what year? 18, 2018. I think 16, 16. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, 60, you are right. Yeah. Because Tokyo yeah. will be next. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. Sorry. It was about <laughs> yeah. about last year. Yes, you are absolutely right. Correct, correct. And if you are familiar with the Summer Olympic Games, you probably know that one, one of the athletes have to accomplish is the decathlon. Those 10 disciplines. Have yes. you ever heard about it? Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, Gabor, do you think that it is possible that they decide the order, how they will take the disciplines? Uh, or the, it is given? Yes, it's given. I it think. is given. Yes, exactly. But I uh, don't know the sequence. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, up to now, I have never met anyone who would know the sequence, the, you know, the order, the list of these 10, uh, ten uh, disciplines. Yeah. Uh, even the sportsmen, when they knew, you know, all the disciplines, but they were not absolutely positive the, how the order went on. So now I will teach you the order of the decathlon, and you will be showing off tonight in front of your family members, and they will think that you are a little bit genius. Yeah, so <laughs> because as I am telling you, the human brain doesn't have the ability to remember the sequence. So that's why it is so difficult for us. And if we want to remember it and we don't know mnemonics, then we have to learn it by heart, by memory. And it is extremely boring and difficult. So now we will start from the first discipline and it is something that we will put on our souls. So imagine your soles of your feet and we are putting there 100 meters sprint. So, and now I want you, how you are sitting, all of you, 
start please to run to run with your feet and you will get you will warm up your soles quickly start it do it now right now move with your with your feet running 100 meter sprint i can hear it yeah i can hear that some of you are doing it everyone understand that you must do it Gabor, are you sprinting? Yes, I yeah. am doing. <laughs> <laughs> I am at 60 meters already. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So like, we know that our souls means now 100 meter sprint. And now please touch your calf. If you don't know what is it, a calf, it is the muscle in the back of, of your leg. leg. Yeah, mm -hmm. down, yeah, yeah, down the knee, yeah. So touch your, touch, Alisa, please touch your calf. Touch it and tell me when you stretch your calf, when you stretch it, when, with which discipline, if you want to, what? When you are stretching. Jump, <laughs> perfect. Alisa, what jump? Uh, wool jump. Oh. No? Uh, long jump. Long jump. Perfect. Long jump. Perfect. Long jump. So you know that your calf means a long jump. Yeah? And now please touch your knee. Peter, are you touching your knee? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Touch your knee and tell me, what can you feel? What is there? Except of your knee. What it could be. Long, long run. Long no, 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 no. Touch it, touch your knee, and you can feel something in your... A ball, a kind of ball. Yeah. The sound is frozen. Oh, she's frozen. Yeah. Ay, ay. <laughs> Dana, you are frozen. Yes, she is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> That's another sport. <laughs> it must be because Shanti touched yeah. her knee. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Winter Olympics. <laughs> She's gone. And Dana was disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Not going to the Olympics. No. no. She has to go because it will be in Japan. Maybe the sculpture will be there. <laughs> they can meet. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't like the food. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Actually, do you like the Japanese food? Uh, sushi? No. Sushi? I oh no! Like no, 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 no. No. <laughs> I, I'm very Irish. I don't like uh, food like that at all. No. Uh, well, in Ireland, you can eat fish. That's very, very nice. Food. Oh yeah. Um, I am allergic to shellfish. Oh, so I see. That's a, that's a I, point. I can't eat anything like that. Anyway. I understand. <laughs> I understand. And what's your favorite food? My favorite food? Yeah. Oh, fillet steak. <laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> that's really bad, but I really <laughs> like it. Yeah, well... It says not to be healthy, but nice. <laughs> mm, exactly. Yeah, well. Well, I have not got COVID. All the people around me in my town here, they have COVID. And oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I eat very well. So I sometimes think that if you, I eat a lot of meat, which is not good, I suppose. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's given me an immunity <laughs> to, to COVID. I hope my fingers crossed. Let it be like that. <laughs> Good on you. 
Where is Dana? I think she is definitely being disqualified from from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe maybe she has taken some drugs to help her memory. Yeah. <laughs> she <gets Thanks>. it. <laughs> or or some nap. She took some nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sleeping. Oh. Actually, we can play. Who who knows the other seven uh, types of sport in in decathlon? Uh, we have the, the throwing uh, put, I think it's called, I, I forgot the, the exact name. When you throw, I think it's three, four, five kilos as far as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The javelin? Javelin? The javelin? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the end, I think it's uh, 1,500 meters, the last one. What, what is it? The discus, no? The discus is the last one. Uh, I don't know. No, no. The last one is definitely uh, a, a longer run. I think it's 15 or Oh, meters. yeah, yeah. 10, oh. 10, kil 10 kilometers, 10,000 meters. No, no. Not at the decathlon. Decathlon, I think it's 15 or meters. But Only? it's a very long run for decathlon people. Uh -huh. okay. Because they are very muscular, because they have to be able to do many things. And there is like a, a jump with a, I don't know the name, a perch, per, perch, we say in French. I don't know what the English word is, where, where you can jump six meters higher. Uh, it's a ball jump. Ball yes, ball jump. jump, yes. So I am, I am back. I, I, I couldn't, it took a, a while to connect again. So yeah. we, we, uh, we ended uh, with knee. Uh, knee. knee. And now please hey. touch your thigh, you know, your, your, this uh, muscle that you are sitting on this uh, back part of your upper leg. Touch it. Yeah. And when so you stretch... For the knee, which is discipline is it? Uh, it was, uh, it was short, short foot. Short oh, foot. Short, it, short oh. foot. It is, yeah, it is that iron ball. Yeah? Short yeah. foot. And now, please tell me when are you stretching? When are you stretching your thigh? Your your thigh, thigh, high high jump, high jump. Correct, high jump. Yeah, high jump. And now, please put your uh, put your hands on your hips and. Imagine that you are running 400 meters. So just to run 400 meters, you would really exercise your hips. So it means that your hips mean for us the discipline 400 meters run. And what I didn't want you from you and what I forgot to tell you not to write it down. So turn over the paper, all of you. And I wanted to bring to your attention that it is very insidious to take notes because your brain immediately, you are actually giving immediately the signal to your brain. You don't have to remember it. It is written somewhere. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you much better remember if you don't write it down because your brain is aware of that responsibility that it has to remember it. So now look into my eyes and tell me what was on our souls? What, was, what discipline was there? On our feet? Uh, yeah. 100 meters sprint. sprint, yeah? yeah. Sprint. What was on our calves? What is that? Long, long, long jump. Long jump. What is on our knee? Oh. Short, Short foot. Short foot. Short foot. Short foot. Yeah. What is on our side? What, what is High on our jump. High jump. High jump. And what is, on our, what is on our hips? 400 meters run. 400 meters run. Yeah. So 
Alisa, may I ask you to repeat it? Look into my eyes and repeat all five disciplines in correct order. Don't look at me. Long jump, um, short put, put. Uh, high jump, and uh, 400 meters run. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Very Thank good. you so much. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and now, please, we will go to the next five disciplines. So, please put your palms on your breasts yeah like this yeah do it please <laughs> everyone do it it is important yeah please do and i am i am just putting i am standing like that you could see me and here imagine one and here imagine also one yeah it is very important one and one and do you know why? Because it is 110 meters hurdles. It is jumping over the fences. Yeah? Do you see? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, it is, it is called hurdles. Yeah? And... Now we are moving up on our body and please hold your shoulder, hold your shoulder. Everyone puts your left hand on your right shoulder. We have to protect our shoulder against dislocation because the discipline is quite tough and it is called discus. Discus, yeah? This yeah. discipline is discus, throwing discus. So, shoulder is discus. Uh -huh. And don't write down anything, just look into my eyes, yeah? You are not supposed to write down anything. And now we are moving up. Please hold your neck. Everyone puts his palms on his neck and this is a very, very dangerous discipline because it, it, you know, it could be fatal for you if you don't uh, do it properly. So it is called the uh, fall vault. Fall vault. Fall it, fall. Is a, it is a very big pole, very long pole, like three meters. And Vault means a jump. Vault means a jump, yeah? Spring. So it means four vault is that they are with that very long pole are jumping over some bar, yeah? In a very, very high. Do you understand what discipline I am talking about, everyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So it, it is here. We are actually, it is why we are touching our neck is because in Czech we have a proverb. Now it is, it, your neck is in a danger. When you are in a danger uh, of your, you know, of your life, uh, Aneta would understand, deti okrk, deti okrk. Yeah? <laughs> so, in, so it means that we are protecting our neck. And now, we have uh, we have something that we will just uh, put into our hair and uh, just here and we will we will prick it there and it is something that we are also throwing and it is called javelin 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 do you know what it means javelin yeah yeah. yeah, it is what what um, uh, the Indians or or some Aborigines were, you know, throwing when they wanted to kill some some game. Yeah, all right. And now we are so tired after these nine disciplines that actually we got two days, five and five every day. So, but we are getting really enough. It is coming somehow over our head. So please lift your arms. Lift your arms, all of you. We are feeling very tired. 
it is going over our head, but we still have to run 1,500 meters. 1,500 <laughs> meters. So now we will, I will ask you to repeat uh, the second part of those five disciplines. So we started with breasts. What was it? What was it? Hurdles. Hurdles. 110 meters hurdle. Hurdles. Yeah, hurdles. Short mm -hmm. legs. Yes. Uh, then it was the shoulder. What was that? Discus. Discus. Uh, then the neck. The neck. Pole vault. Yes. Pole vault. Then uh, hair. Javelin. Javelin. And then, oh, this, you know, 1,500 meters. Yes. And yeah. now I will ask you to look into my eyes and we will repeat all 10 disciplines. And then you will be able to write them down on your own, but not on that original paper where you wrote already few from the beginning, but you will take a completely new paper and write down all 10 disciplines. But first of all, we will, we will try to recall them again, to repeat them again together. So what was on your souls? What was the first discipline? Lima. Disco. <laughs> Disco. Now, now, uh, the, now, uh, now, now, we are going for 10 now. So what was the very first? Lima? Yeah, I can't hear you because you didn't unmute yourself, but I expect that you say sprint, yeah? 110 meters. Correct. No, no, 100, no, no. We are starting with all 10. So the very first one, the Lima. Uh, on your soles, on your soles, on your feet, on your feet. Oh, uh, maybe short run. Uh, uh, yes. 100 the, meters. Sprint. Yes, 100 correct. meters. 100 yeah. meters. Sprint. Yeah, correct. Thank you. And what was the next one on our calf? What was that? Long jump. Long, Long jump. jump. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, Manefa, perfect. So, and now our knee. Our knee, what was there? Shot put. Uh, shot put. Shot put. Shot put. Very, very good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, what was the next one on our side? What was the Aneta? What was that? High jump. High jump. High, 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 high jump. jump. High jump. Correct. Correct. And what was on our hips? Uh, 400 meters. 400 meters. meters. Very good. What was the next one on the breast? 100. 110 meters. 110 meters. Hurdles. Correct. Hurdles. What was on our shoulder? Discus. Uh -huh. Discus. Discus. What was on our neck? High vault. Good vault. Pole vault. Pole vault. Pole vault. Pole vault. Pole vault. What was in our mm -hmm. head? Uh, javelin. Javelin. And what was this? Uh, 15, 15 meters. 1500 meters. Now please write it down. Write it down. All of you. On a new sheet of paper that you will not see anything, write it down from your memory now. What you remember. Peter, are you writing this? Peter, are you writing those 10 disciplines? It is written down. Yeah, all right. Well, correct, correct. <laughs> Good. I expect that all of you got those 10 disciplines in correct order. And I have a question. Have you felt that it was very demanding? No. No. No, it was not. It was fun. It mm. was just fun. And it is what memory training is about. It is relaxing. It is a great fun. You don't feel that it costs you too much energy. And the output is overwhelming. So when we have the next memory training, I will teach how to remember numbers. Not only, mm. not only telephone numbers, but also long lines of 
numbers of digits and we will end with a 25 digit line that you will all remember like that. So, <laughs> so thank you very much for your attention. I expect that now you understand better what memory training is about. Mm -hmm. That it mm -hmm. is a very effective tool. How to increase instantly the self-confidence and self-esteem of the elderly. You don't have to wait for one year to gradually and slowly improve your memory. You can do it within 20 minutes and you believe that you still have a good mental potential. And it is the most important because our task is to make uh, the, uh, the <coughs> older population feel good. And I hope that you feel good after today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Very good. joining. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Bye bye. Very good. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Good bye. bye bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you Dana. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Well, bye, -bye. thank you. Bye. -bye. <laughs> bye, -bye. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Dana, to refresh memory. I have very good memories. When you I am so pleased. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Dana. When the next training will be? We, we will decide. We will decide with Monique. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. <laughs>